Welcome into a quick hitter edition of the OG podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of these uh, kind of mini episodes where we kind of rapid fire some uh, breaking news or or uh, hit some uh, hot button topics uh, that maybe don't warrant a, a full hour long episode. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the release uh, from state prison uh, of Genovese soldier Vito Alberti, um, a very high ranking soldier that uh, worked right underneath uh, OG Genovese Capo Chucky Tuzo. Chucky, I think he's still alive. He's all, he's like 90 years old right now. Um, he got busted uh, with Alberti in the 2010s uh, by the New Jersey State Police for running a multitude of rackets, uh, sports gambling, backdoor casino gambling, extortion, loan sharking, uh, labor racketeering, so forth and so forth, drugs, I believe. And uh, both got hit with five-year sentences. Alberti uh, did about four and a half and uh, walked out. He's 64 years old. When uh, the bus came down, he was Tuzo's guy in New Jersey and reported directly to Tuzo and uh, and Genovese, Genovese administrators. Um, wasn't your traditional soldier. Uh, was a little bit more elite than a, just a run-of-the-mill button man. And Alberti was someone that is very connected and has always had ties into other crime families in uh had has had rackets in uh, new york new jersey parts of pennsylvania and i think the real uh noteworthy point when you're talking about uh, alberti's criminal resume if you will is the fact that he was deeply involved in what was being planned as a uh, a violent coup at the top of the Philadelphia Mafia back at, uh, in the first couple months of 2000s. Uh, it was going to be a, a hostile takeover by New Jersey uh, capo Pete the Crumb Caprio, who was the Bruno Scarfo Cramp crime family's guy uh, in North Jersey. And Caprio was an old school guy that had a lot of connections in New York City. And he, he throughout the mid to late 90s, uh, had acted as the uh, Philly Mafia's go-between with the New York bosses. Uh, and Alberti was his guy that uh, he would reach out to uh, in the Genovese crime family. They, were, had, they had some joint rackets. Uh, Alberti was close to another Genovese skipper, uh, Lawrence Ricci, who they called Derry Larry because he had a lot of uh, interest in the uh, milk game, <laughs> uh, the, in the milk business. Uh, he was related to uh, uh, a Philadelphia mob member in the Jersey crew, uh, Beepsy Centurino. And Caprio got sanctioning from the Genovese crime family and the Gambino crime family uh, to murder the then sitting administration of the Philadelphia Mafia, uh, guys that are still active or semi-active today. And uh, the, the plan was for for Caprio to kill then acting boss, Uncle Joe Legambi, underboss, handsome Stevie Mazzone, and uh, then conciliary Georgie Boy Borghese. Today, Legambi uh, is in semi-retirement and is acting as conciliary. Mazzone is still underboss. He just reported to prison. He's got to do about five years, six years on, a, on another racketeering case. And um, Borghese is, according to my sources, the, the acting boss of the Philadelphia Mafia right now. And Alberti backed this play and was going to help Caprio uh, kill those three and uh, take over the family. And the plan was to lure Legambi, Mazzone, and Borghese to... Uh, a meeting in New Jersey that was going to be under the pretense of getting Legambi sanctioned or uh, introduced to 
the New York Dons. Legambi was just taking over as, as acting boss for Skinny Joey Merlino, who uh, we all know about. And Merlino at that point was going to do his first real big prison sentence a dozen years for, for uh, uh, racketeering. And he had reported to prison in 99, and this was early 2000, and Legambi needed uh, intros, and that was what was going to get them to this meeting. Uh, and the plan was to, to shoot them. I think some of the plan involved like machine guns. And then they were going to, with the help of Vito Alberti, were, they were going to bury them in a, a pre-dug grave in New Jersey. And Caprio was going to be taken to New York by Alberti, Ricci, and a, a Gambino guy by the name of Tony Proto, and was going to be named the the boss, the godfather of Philadelphia. Uh, it never happened. Before it was pulled off, Caprio was snagged in a, a racketeering indictment and flipped and told the U.S. attorney and FBI all about you know, his intentions and who he was plotting with. Um, what's also very interesting in regards to this plot that, that uh, Caprio was blueprinting out with the Genovese and the Gambinos was he was, according to my sources, was receiving coaching and um, an aid in some regards by Ralph Natale, who was the previous boss of the Philadelphia Mafia, who had flipped and was preparing to testify against Merlino and at least Borghese and Mazzone in, in, a, in a year from then uh, at trial. And even though he was in a witness protection wing, having cut a deal to to testify, become the first sitting mob boss uh, to, to ever take the stand, he was caught on wiretaps talking to Caprio, talking to people that he knew in New, uh, in, in New York and the five families. I believe he was talking to Alberti. An Italian Alberti had done uh, prison time together in the 1980s. And... Uh, Ralph was trying to play both sides of the fence and who knows what would have happened if, if uh, Caprio had pulled off the plot, but whether it was simply Ralph was mad at, at the Joey Merlino crew who had pushed him out of power uh, and was just trying to get back at him. Um, or he thought he could somehow finesse his way back uh, and renege on his cooperation. I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Ralph was uh, was a legend in his own mind. Although personally, I I, I actually like Ralph a lot. I got to uh, sit with him um, for about six months uh, initially on his book. <laughs> Hit the siren, Benny, uh, <laughs> on a on a on a book project that I ended up leaving um, and and being replaced on. But uh, I liked him personally. But uh, who knows what what his end game was there? But it, it never it never got off the ground. Um, but Alberti is coming back now. I mean, he'd been on, he was on the street for, a, for quite a bit after that whole thing blew up. So if there was going to be any repercussions, I believe they would have already been carried out, but it's, an, it's, it's interesting to note that, uh, you know, from around the time that Alberti went away in 19, 2019, Georgie Borghese, um, I do believe, uh, around that time was, was taken over as acting boss, um, before he had just been a, a capo and had been in prison for a, a, a long stretch. And I I don't presume to be in anybody's head, but I, I would bet money that, that Georgie Borghese, Joe Legambi, and, and Stevie Mazzone uh haven't forgotten about uh Alberti being involved in that uh in that in that plot. So um Again, I'm not predicting anything, any retribution. I think if it, if there was going to be retribution, it would it would have already happened. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll they'll mend fences. I know that the Genovese are, are still very connected in, into Philly. Uh, when Chicky Changalini died back in earlier in the spring, late winter, there was a, a contingent of Genovese that came to the funeral. So Vito Alberti is is uh, is a free man after four years in state prison. You know where he fits into the uh, Genovese rackets in in New Jersey right now. 
you know, we will see, uh, you know, if there's a promotion in his future, we will see if, uh, he, you know, he goes back, uh, to what he was doing before, whether, whether he has an, you know, an increased level of responsibility, only time will tell, but we'll be there to report it. Um, we like bringing you these, these quick, these quick hitters, uh, whether we're talking about guys getting out of prison, guys going to prison, guys getting arrested, um, promoted, demoted. We'll be here to share it with you at the OG podcast. For Jimmy Bucciolato, we'll be back for another uh, full-length episode this week. But for Jimmy, for Benny behind the glass, Scott Bernstein, OG pod out.